Description is transport, mental health, the social services, you know, and housing. It just feels like every area has been infected by by cuts. The government changed things on on some of your uh, pres- prescription stuff. So at one point, I was having to pay for, for four or five medications, and um, I, I'm just not buying them anymore. I can't afford it because of all the expenses. I just couldn't afford the food. Basically, I've been living on milk. Uh, I, I've lost uh, 48 kilograms, and it's kind of triggered my eating disorder. So I'm just, I'm just gonna have to go around like this. I can't turn the light on, and then it's just quite a unhygienic kind of crawl up onto the toilet. But I've fallen and knocked myself out on the sink. Government are no longer doing the incontinent pants uh, to just doing the pads on prescription, and I can't afford them all the time, so I'm left in wet pants, you know, pull-up pants, half the time, which is affecting my health, but uh, you know, also kind of dignity. I've been left in a really degrading and humiliating state. Um, and I hate living like this. Um, I, I, I hate living like this. <laughs> It's not just the, 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 the cuts, it's how disabled people are being treated within that. The whole process, you're just treated worse than a farm animal going to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> it feels frustrating because, you know, I, I know that if just a few things were different, like being somewhere accessible, you know, in an accessible home, and the care being fully in place, well, I know my life could be really different. You know, I'm not asking for a m- magic wand over my conditions. I lose consciousness with one of my conditions and have seizures. I'm just terrified having to leave. My neighbours found me unconscious a number of times on the stairs. I, I've got my head open on the stairs. The, the OT assessed me needing a ground floor wheelchair accessible flat and, and stating that this flat is unsuitable. Um, my housing association also agreed and medically assessing me band A emergency but they have no accessible housing in the area. Skim, <laughs> so. Again, because of funding cuts, there's these huge waiting lists for a wheelchair, electric wheelchair, which is kind of fundamental for disabled people to be able to get about. And so then I I, I sold my TV, and I had a second-hand laptop that I sold, and I had a little yard sale at the front, front trying to just sell items and cutlery and plates and stuff, and it was still nowhere near enough. It was quite... I have to leave. And, um, and then the black cabs came along because they'd seen my deterioration and, and, and got me the wheelchair. If I lived in the accessible uh, housing, I wouldn't have to lock it up. I'd just be able to be get from bed into the wheelchair and go to the bathroom and to the kitchen and <laughs> then 
just wheel myself straight out onto the street and go straight to my appointments. I, I wouldn't have to be doing any of this. You know, I, was like, I have a first class honours degree in architecture. My brain doesn't work like it used to, but I'd still like to be able to do some things. Obviously, I, I'm not going to be well enough to work full time, but I, li I like to be volunteering. I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to be helping people. I'd like to feel like I was part of society, and and I just feel like I'm not even being given that opportunity to try and and, and contribute in some way.